Hey, what's up? Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video coming at you from a bit of a different setting, the living room, because the studio is a little too dark and gloomy to film in. Uh, and today I want to show you the full process of how I painted this relatively large piece for me based on a picture I took in Brooklyn Bridge in our last visit to New York. The fun part is that it's based on a smaller painting that I did uh, before that and I really liked it. So I decided to make a larger piece and this one is going to go to the Fabriano uh, in watercolor convention in Italy in Fabriano on May I believe 25th to 31st So the painting is gonna be there. Let me know if you're gonna be there I just want to apologize in advance the video is filmed vertically not horizontally because I used my iPhone But you can see all of the details perfectly well. So with that Let's jump into the process. So getting started now, I will be honest with you, I sped up the video, but just a bit by 50%. So it's not even double speed or anything like that, because usually when I speed up the video, it's much more than that. I just wanted to make it a little shorter. It was coming up over an hour and I didn't want it to be super long. So starting with the first wash. Now here I wanted to do something a little different than my usual stuff. So I started with the warmth in the middle of the painting and then I added the sky in above that. I do have the table at a bit of an angle so things flow downwards and I actually love that. I wanted the blue to flow down over the yellow and enrich it. And I have to say that none of of the paints you see here, despite me usually using pure colors, is really truly pure. There is some of that blue, which is French ultramarine, in the yellow ochre that you see in the middle. There is some of the yellow ochre in the blue. Uh, now I came back with some water. I felt like it needed to be a little lighter. So the colors I'm using are very, um, feel very organic because they're a combination of many colors. So my three primary colors for this painting are basically French ultramarine, uh, yellow ochre, and that red, which is the equivalent of a quinacridone rose. Uh, these are all M grams. I'm, I'm going back to using them finally. I love these paints. They flow a lot, which is something you'll see here uh, with the red of the car spreading into the yellow. Um, so that's something that I really like about them, but you have to learn how to use them in a way that will still work for you, obviously. Um, and when I'm doing these initial washes, all I'm seeing is the highlights. Where the highlights are going to be, and then I'm going to paint around them. That's my only concern, really, which allows me to focus on what colors and temperatures I want to use and where, and edges sometimes, if necessary, around the highlights. Um, so yeah, and now even within that red, I have a bit of the yellow. So the yellow ochre is dominant throughout this entire painting, even though it's more visible in the middle, obviously. Uh, and that gives the feeling of, of better connection. So all of this, uh, the, the colors don't feel like I just stuck whatever I wanted where I wanted. I'm actually... Um, making sure the whole thing feels like one unified painting. Now, under the car, there is the heaviest shadow in this painting, and I wanted to save myself some work down the line, so I'm darkening it gradually by adding more and more paint, Okay, trying to randomize the direction of my strokes, not going in the same direction. Um, now I'm mixing again, all of my three primaries are there, and I'm just darkening the area under the car. My plan is to push it to be as dark as I can, because that way I don't have to do as much darkening later on and I can get this next layer to be as dark as necessary because you know dry paint is a bit harder to get even so if I can get it to be dark now while it's still wet then I don't need to add too dark of a glaze over it okay I hope that makes sense um, and with that the first layer is done now I cut immediately to the next section but this is after allowing it some time to dry I also used a hair dryer for this so now it's perfectly dry and I'm starting to render what I see in the far distance okay this is where I want the value to be fairly light and I also want the color to be fairly gray so neutral or maybe even blue okay things in the distance tend to show less of red less of yellow so the blue becomes a little more dominant here um, on th second thought, I could have made this even bluer, but maybe that's a correction for me for next time to try out when I have a painting that's larger scale and shows depth. Now, here we get to one of the most crucial advice I can give you for these types of painting processes that are a little larger. Again, this for me is a larger size, uh, 38 on 56 centimeters. Um, that's about 15 on, I guess, 20 something inches. And um, what becomes important is having enough details. When you work small, 
and and you know details aren't everything even here what's most important is to to have a good composition uh, and from afar that the painting looks good but paintings that are larger tend to look a little empty if you don't include enough details in them understandably so what i'm doing now is adding a lot of them and i'm i'm I don't want to say forcing myself, but I'm, I'm making sure I'm very aware of the fact that I need to have a lot of details, more than usual, okay? So I'm painting around these highlight shapes that I'm making up on the spot. These are the parts of the details I mentioned. Um, doing a lot of these smaller areas that I want to leave white, rooftops around structures and so on, uh, different elements of the dock, you know, different machinery there. I'm trying to have it all together. And as long as I'm keeping the line and I have a small bead, even if it's small, you know, all the water pool down and at the bottom of the wash, then I can move on um, continuously without any interruptions, okay? Now there's a major highlight in just a moment coming up on the right. There's a huge shed or, or, or a building there uh, on the dock, on the water that I will get. And I'm, I'm um, purpose, purposely... Um, <laughs> you keep confusing, getting confused with this word. I'm purposely uh, making the shape a little more interesting, as you'll see in a moment. I'm cutting through the rooftop in the middle, and I'm adding some um, structures on top of it, or maybe antennas, you'll see in just a moment. And I think that adds a lot of grace to it. A lot of what I'm doing is just imagining things. Like, really, I'm just imagining that there are some complex shapes around it, and that I'm putting them in. Uh, it just requires imagination and careful observation of the reference and a lot of practice doing that, okay? It's not it's not something that's necessarily easy to render details without actually painting details. It's a skill. Like everything else, you improve at it. I think larger pieces put more emphasis on it and stress uh, or maybe show the viewer if you have that skill or not a little better than other uh, smaller paintings. Uh, because you have to include a lot of details. Now here I'm going over to the water. Okay, this is already the water. I'm trying to use some dry brushing just to get some sparkles on it. Now here I did introduce a third, uh, fourth color, which is phthalo blue. To get the more nice uh, blue turquoise quality of the water, I added some phthalo blue here. So far it was just French ultramarine, okay? So I am moving freely between colors. I'm not too locked on one or two colors or three colors. I can introduce other colors, uh, but I am doing that very strategically. Okay, I also added a couple of ripples to the water there. And with that, the, this part of the wash is almost done. So notice how I'm using the road in the middle to divide the painting into two sections, essentially. Now, here are some of the details I told you I'll add to the rooftop there, I'm trying to add an elements and then their shadows. And this really helps with the feeling of realism. You will see just a few of these things on the in the actual scene, but all of these little details and elements provide with provide the viewer with a lot of things to look at. And this, I think what's interesting about this process, I don't know if you can pick up on it, but when I do processes for YouTube, obviously you usually don't see my face. Here you can see some of it. Um, what makes this process very different from what you usually see is that I'm fully in it, okay? I'm not thinking about instructing or explaining things to you. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just in the painting process. Um, and I think it gives you a nice glimpse into what that kind of a thing looks like because you usually don't get to see exactly that. Okay, now I added the, another section of the water that is visible under the, the different uh, scaffolds and elements of the bridge. Uh, <coughs> the reason I added it already now be is because I wanted it to be similar to the blue up top, okay? And sometimes you're running the risk of having a different color behind, change behind the element, and then it just looks awkward. And I already had that mix on the palette. Now I'm starting to render the right side, and here, it's just a, you know, same kind of thing. I'm just painting very carefully um, while adding smaller bits of light and shadow and making sure that uh, everything looks good from afar. The most important part isn't necessarily where the exact highlights are. It's more about the overall value and overall temperature. So the buildings are blue, they're cooler. Uh, the, the value is relatively light. Now, I know that I'm going to paint all of the, the different details of the bridge later on. However, I'm not bothering myself with, getting, with painting around them now. 
What I'm doing is pretending they don't exist and rendering the right side as I see it. The reason is they're dark anyway, so I'm gonna add them over it, glaze over it with um, wet on dry. And also I'm planning on adding some of the highlights with opaque paint straight out of the tube. So I don't really care. I just want to make sure the background looks good. You see what I mean? I just want to have a good looking background so that uh, later on when I layer on top of it, the bridge details, which is gonna be a really cool step. I think you'll enjoy. It will look good, okay? <coughs> now. Here I'm running the risk almost of being too detailed and I think I was close to that but it ended up being fine because some of these details do show through the bridge. I think one thing I could have done maybe a little better was to lighten up uh, here to have a lighter value but it's not the end of the world you'll see in the end result still looks good. Now I'm doing something that I love to do and that is under the highlights I'm adding some darker values wet and wet into the wash. What this does is it makes it gives off the effect that there's an actual building there because under the highlight, which is the rooftop, we have a shadow on the side of the building that's farther from the sun. You see, so this complements, the two elements complement each other really well. Highlight and a shadow under it. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now there's a main structure there that I want to get in uh, that you can see really close to the bridge. It's like, a, I don't know, some kind of a very elongated shed or I don't know what it is. It could be like a million things, but I'm just, I want to get that in and I'm actually painting around that. Uh, so you see where I ended the wash down the, the bottom is where this is going to come. And over that, I'm going to put in some more details, some more antennas, some more elements on the rooftops. But as you can see, I'm now just putting in some wet and wet details darker shadows, some reds, some blues, a combination of both because we're getting closer to our point of view. The closer we get, the more reds and the more yellows you'll see, uh, which is why it's important for me to start including them. These will enhance the sense of depth. So here I'm now starting to work on that elongated shed I just mentioned. Now with all of these elements I'm putting in on the roof, it's also important to put in shadows. So you see me put a line and then swipe a shadow to the right, okay? Uh, it's actually um, down and right, but because of the angle of the, uh, of the video, you see it like to the right. Um, and a lot of it is guessing. So for example, the cars near the buildings, the elements of the highway that I'm gonna get to in a moment, this shed I'm putting on top of the shed, these are all, it's guesswork. I'm, I'm hoping that it will connect to something that makes sense. Now, when I look at the at the, um, the reference, I do see all sorts of different details there. So I'm telling myself, okay, if I see those here, then it should work there as well. So I'm just trusting that I can render what I see accurately and that this rendering will lead to a realistic result. It's just like I'm talking about using abstract shapes and trusting the result. And I'm gonna actually do another video on this. Uh, I think it's gonna be on Saturday uh, on painting portraits and just trusting that it will connect to whatever it needs to be. Okay, that's a really important point. Uh, a lot of it, same here for the, these cars I'm working on right now. It's just cars parked there. And you have to have trust that it will end up looking like the thing it should uh, look like. As long as you're good in looking at the reference, matching the value you see, matching the shape you see to a somewhat of an, an accurate uh, result, and you're not actually drawing every car individually because they're not visible, then you will do a good job, okay? It's, again, easier said than done. It's something you need to practice quite a lot. Um, but uh, it will be worth it. So now I'm starting to work on the lower sections here uh, and I am leaving a bit of highlights for the details of the bridge that I told you I'm gonna ignore. I, if I can remember, I do leave room for highlight. I also did that on the left side of the bridge as you can tell with that uh, two patches of blue and a, and a yellow line in the middle that I left from the initial wash. Okay, this you have to pick your battles as they say. Sometimes it's worth working around a highlight, sometimes it isn't and you're better off just covering it up and then later coming back uh, and adding more uh, definition to it. So you really have to figure out uh, what's worth your time and what isn't. And many times it means that yes, you will have to work a little harder later on. Now notice how I'm still sticking to the large brush. It's a Skoda brush, it has a good tip, but still it's really big. And I'm trying to stretch my use of it as much as I can because this large of a brush leads me to look at the overall picture a little more because it's large. 
uh, I can't now start filling in everything like a coloring book. I actually have to treat it as a, a an overall impression I'm trying to get. And whatever element I'm putting into the painting, I always look at it in a micro level, how it fits the small environment around it, is it accurate and similar to the reference, but then also does it fit in the entire thing, the entire painting. That's really important, okay? You have to have everything fit in a, in a very um, holistic way, okay? So both the, the area around it and also the entire painting as a whole. Now this, the ledge, the security um, ledge and the edge of the road was really important for me because it is a beautiful detail and you can see quite a lot of it in the reference photo. So I wanted to make sure that it is visible here. Now, after some thought, I figured that I should just drop a vertical line from the bridge downwards because that diagonal didn't work. Uh, it just didn't make any sense. Uh, so now I'll probably start exploring the cars and, and adding some of them on the highway. Not too many cars there. There's obviously the division between the lanes. Um, not too many cars there and maybe I should have included some more. But I do feel like this is full of details. So maybe putting in more would have been counterintuitive. Uh, so I'm happy with what I did so far. But just a few touches on the road. Uh, to get those few cars in. Now, one thing I discovered that works really well for me is to have kind of two squares for the normal cars, not the trucks, not what I'm doing now, but the normal cars, just two lines. One is for the front and another is for the windshield. And then uh, you get the light on top of the, you know, the, the engine. And uh, I don't know, it just made sense. And then I also added some dark shadows underneath them. So not, not my best cars, but pretty good, I think, and they, they look nice. So now I'm mixing a bit of a darker mix for the shadow underneath them. I use the French Ultramarine and the same red, uh, kind of Conagodon Rose or um, uh, Perlin Red. It's, it's all the same. I don't really mind which one it is. All colors really work nicely as long as you minimize the selection. Uh, and now I'm just putting in some details for the also lanes for, I'm just looking at it to see if something is missing. That's where I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, okay, there's a sign there at the back. So I'm putting that in. It will help create a nice sense of depth and all of that. Now comes the really crucial part and that is placing the details of the bridge. And I decided to wait with the lower section uh, uh, until I actually put those in because these details have an influence on what the shadows look like underneath. So I wanted to start with them. And here there's no real choice. You have to be bold and you have to start putting in the details. On the other hand, this stage can be easy because it's like drawing. You don't have to take into consideration too much of the edges and what they look like. You can just put everything in and it will uh, look good because it's like drawing. But you do want to make sure that you get your lines relatively straight, that you get the details to look kind of like what you see in the reference photo. Um, but but mainly courage, that's what necess what's necessary here. Now, this may seem too dark, but you still don't have the full context. And what do I mean by that? The full context is going to show up when I'm going to darken the car at the really close foreground, the two cars and the shadows on the actual bridge. These will put the, the, the what do you call it, the details up top on the bridge into the right context, okay? They won't look as extremely dark as they look now. Um, so I'm slowly building the bridge's frame. Would have been smarter to maybe get the vertical lines out of the way, but for some reason I didn't think of that. So I'm doing the, uh, sorry, the horizontal lines first. Maybe it would have been smarter, but I'm just getting in all the vertical lines and kind of guessing where to pause and where to stop them. Uh, but that's fine, that still works. Um, and you see there are these very interesting details uh, where the vertical and horizontal lines meet. It's like a small metal piece two metal pieces on each sides and the highlight between them becomes a very interesting and beautiful effect. Okay, so uh, I don't know, I really like the way it looks. Uh, these have a thicker kind of box up top and then the diagonal lines. Uh, I do want to mention this, you have to remind yourself, this is 150% of the original speed. So it's 50% faster than the original. Don't paint as fast as it seems here. I know it can be tricky because sometimes if you watch a lot of time-lapse tutorials, uh, you tend to want to recreate that feeling and I don't recommend it. Okay, so uh, treat this as a, that's not a real speed. Um, again, I considered doing this real time, but then it was over an hour long and 
quite frankly, my voice is kind of done from talking a lot yesterday and doing podcasts. And so I didn't want to record an hour long video and upload it. It's just a big mess. But if you do want me once in a while when I do these very long processes to do a real time thing, like fully real time, um, let me know. I didn't speed it up again significantly so that you can still follow. You can definitely follow along with me here. Um, but uh, but I still didn't want it to be super duper long. Now, I'm not too worried about highlights on the bridge. I'm going to add that, as I mentioned earlier, in a, in a dry brush manner. Uh, I have this new uh, John Brilliant. John, I don't know what you'd pronounce it. John uh, Brilliant, like a brilliant uh, yellow white. Uh, that's a beautiful, it's a Shinhan PWC paint. Uh, I couldn't find the right Daniel Smith, but I, you know, I did, didn't have buff titanium. So I used the Shinhan and uh, it's really good for, for this purpose. It's really good if you want to add light, warm highlights. Um, so here we go now with the section closest to us. I probably skipped some details because my phone stopped filming at some point. Sorry about that. Same goes for the car. There's going to be a small time skip. My apologies once again. But now notice how I'm creating the shape of the car by means of indicating the shadow behind it. That really brings out the shape. And on second thought, I probably should have changed that part a little more, but I tried being really loyal to the reference photo. And I think I lost an interesting highlight effect. But uh, in any case, you know, you can get everything perfect. Um, now here I'm thinking, what should I do? Should I connect it to the shadow of the car? Should I connect it to the shadows underneath the car? Um, because you want to make these connections as much as you can, especially in the foreground. This is where it's really important to connect as much as you can. Uh, so, and it's also pretty uh, dark paint. So if I miss a spot and I don't connect it properly, it will still look good, uh, but I still wanna make sure that I do make the connections. So here is one connection to this car in the foreground. Uh, I wanna connect to the shadows on top of, on, on its uh, rooftop. Uh, so you see all of these shadows in and the highlight that they're gonna leave is what will make this car look fantastic. I really like how the car on the left side uh, turned out, even more in the smaller painting, by the way, but the bigger one too. Um, now I'm connecting the the, the glass, the, the back, uh, what do you call it? Not the windshield, but the, the back shield. I'm connecting it with the, the lighter blues because this is really in the peripheral uh, area of the painting. I don't want this to pop too much. So I'm making sure that it's all connected I do leave the highlights there, obviously, but it's still very much connected all throughout. Even the, the tail light, I'm gonna put in a connected manner. Uh, by the way, the blue seems a little dark on top of the car, uh, but it, it's gonna dry a little lighter, so don't worry about that. I know it looks a little darker than the reference. Um, also, the reference photo, it's a little more gray. Again, I kind of exaggerated some of the colors to accentuate some of the, the you know temperature, what's more important, what's less important. Uh, and now I'm just softening some of the sh shades here, some of the shadows. Um, a lot of the things are intuitive, so it's really hard to explain sometimes, but I'm doing my best. Uh, let me know if something isn't clear and I'll try and you know uh, provide more context for it. So now I'm getting to work on the shadow of the car. This is, I think, the most rewarding part. It's gonna be the most fun one. Um, I actually think I did a bit of a better job with the car in the center in the smaller painting, the smaller version of this, uh, but still a decent job here. And I think the message really gets across. I think it was just a little more graceful in the uh, previous work, but but that's fine. Uh, so working my way, I have to work fast because it's again, very dry paint. So it's gonna, uh, very thick paint, it's gonna dry fairly fast. So I have to keep coming back with more and more color. The way I approach these dark reds, for example, is it's almost you know black, but I'm starting with a base of red and then I darken it with blue. That's how I get the paint to still look kind of like the, the red it is. But have in mind that the, the paint of the shadow isn't necessarily the first indication for the color of the car. What's more of an indication is its uh, highlight on the rooftop. The, the, lighter, um, the lighter red is what's gonna indicate to the viewer that, oh, this is a red car. Okay, so don't stress over, you know, if you're trying to, to um, mimic the values you see, and by the way, that's the time skip I was talking about. Sorry about that. Again, missed some of the, the, the phone just stopped working. But don't be too obsessed over uh, the shadowy color. So if the shadow is almost blue or black, 
it doesn't mean the impression of the car will be ruined, okay? It just means that the highlight is what's gonna tell the story. And if you look at the, the top parts of the car, they're red, it's very clear that they're red, and this is what's gonna, it's gonna hint to the viewer, oh, okay, so the car is red. Now, I'm just rendering the shapes over the windshield and all of the front of the car as I see them. That's the, the secret, really. You just render them as you see them and hope that they connect to something that makes sense. Now, we're actually near the end of the process. There's about eight more minutes uh, of just adding small details and small touches. Um, now, I'm darkening some of the shadows on the bridge itself. Uh, I felt like they need to be a little darker. And at this point, I don't even remember exactly what I did. It's just a lot of touch-ups, uh, but I will add my commentary as I see it. So here I added the tail light. Uh, it's a mix of a very bright and light um, cadmium red or cadmium orange. I think it's a Shinhan PWC2 with a um, with the um, yellow, the bright June Brilliant. Uh, so the two of them together create these beautiful orangey lights. Or maybe I even mixed it with some uh, Hansa Yellow Medium uh, just to get that nice little orangey effect. Um, or you can just get an opaque orange. Now notice how I'm getting rid of color on this scrap piece of paper so that I can get a proper dry brush effect. To get a proper dry brush, sometimes you need to get rid of paint. So the brush needs to have a few uh, little paint, a little water. So that's what I did here. Now here I'm adding opaque paint over that highlight on the rooftop. Um, and I'm kind of moving it around. Now, if you look at the windshield, I added some opaque green paint there because you can see some green reflected on it, but unfortunately, I didn't capture that on camera as well. My apologies once again. Uh, so I'm putting in these small highlights that are gonna play a major role in how this reads. And you see there's a very gentle one at the back of the car. I'm just adding them where I see them. In a moment, I'm gonna add them to the top of the bridge as well, uh, really in depth and show you how I, I hopefully add them uh, over there as well to the side of the car that was kind of a des design decision there isn't really is that strong of a highlight there uh, but i did want to bring out some of that section in so i put it in there anyway and now uh, we're starting to work on the highlights on the metal beams of the bridge uh, this is i think the one of the most important uh, parts again the major shapes are what takes care of the you know the composition the painting looking good but this if you want to rank the details on a, on a kind of a ladder of importance, this is one of the more important details, okay? Because this will complement the, the very dark uh, color used for the beams at first. So what you essentially get is a high point, point of high contrast. You get a very light value next to a very dark value, and that slowly brings the the metal beams to life, okay? So the, the, I don't know if you'd call it scaffolding or metal beams, but whatever it is, it brings it to life, it makes it pop, makes it make sense. Here you see the connections I told you about, the connectors between the vertical and horizontal beams and also diagonal beams. Uh, they have these two highlights over them, which are beautiful. And depending on where it is on the bridge, so on the right, you see them a little more from the, from the left angle. On the left, you see them. You have to look at all of the different shapes in every single level of the painting in every single stage. It's just a part of the, the challenge of painting accurately. When you get started, you focus on what matters, which is just indicating the temperatures, you know, the first wash. Then later on, you that's the most complex wash to me, and that is the second wash. You add the large chunks and shapes, and they still have to work together holistically. And now we're at the stage of adding the small details that also have to work holistically with everything else. So everything always has to work together with what came before that in order to create a, a top-notch impression, okay? You will you can get pretty good impression even if you mess some of this up. I make it sound extremely difficult. While it's not extremely difficult, it's just very difficult. So, so uh, yeah, I hope that uh, still keeps you encouraged. Um, but even if you mess up a lot of these, quite frankly, especially now in the, in the uh, stage of the small details, you can mess half of this up and it will still make sense because the, we laid some good groundwork, some good foundations. Uh, this is optional, <laughs> quite honestly. What I'm doing right now, you could look at it as optional work, really. Um, just adding the highlights where I see them. Uh, in the smaller painting, I actually painted around these highlights. But now I didn't because it's a larger piece. I have to have more in mind, so I, I just didn't have the stamina to, to paint around these. I just painted over them, as you saw, and now we're adding them in. 
uh, in just a couple of uh, touches here and there I'm spreading this out a bit to make it less um, less bold um, it's just a bit on the side of the car there's a bit of a highlight there I'm, I'm making the most out of this white while I have it in my brush um, so so this is why you see me kind of traveling all around the painting with it just it makes sense because it, it's work to put in opaque paint is work you have to take it straight out of the tube I don't want to waste it so I'm really looking around the painting scene uh, what where I need to edit now as soon as we zoom out in a couple of moments you'll better see this in the context of the whole painting again apologies about the awkward angle but uh, as long as you get to see me work and it starts to make sense then I'm happy now I diluted some of that uh, white paint with a bit of color and a bit of what I had on the palette so now essentially I have a more diluted but still quite opaque paint um, and the reason I diluted it is first I wanted better flow and I also wanted it to merge with the colors in the background a bit more you saw me adding that white to the little I don't know antennas and chimneys at the back so talking about antennas now I'm adding the car antenna now I'm adding the, the glass for the car on the left um, and this I also don't want it to be too bold so notice how I'm gonna merge it together with the shadow on the part of the car that's facing towards us okay now it's still split but I'm gonna come back with some water and connect the two together. You see, I'm connecting everything together. I wanted it to be darker, but I didn't want it to be as strikingly bold and obvious because it's again in the very sideline of the painting. And now we're really near the end of it, just a few details here and there, cutting off some of the highlights that I felt were redundant or unnecessary or distracting. That's always an important part of it. You have to get rid of those highlights that don't play an important role. And I have a lot of that opaque paint on my uh, palette now. I needed to get rid of it. Now I'm adding some of the bolts on the beams. That's really a something something that's really cool. And, and I don't know, it's just a nice extra touch. And it will show from afar. Uh, and it's just, you know, small dots that are darker. Uh, the, the angle in which the light kind of uh, uh, hit the bridge uh, has led to this perfect reference like this is a perfect reference for me it's a bit complex there's quite a few details but it's a perfect reference and now I'm doing the same for the beams up top uh, you can see the, all the bolts there uh, and it just adds a, some some more things to look at and again a large painting requires that it requires some more details it requires you to have something interesting to look at um, so I'm doing the exact same thing on the right side and also adding these cast shadows by some of the beams. Uh, I don't even know if their direction makes sense but I wanted to put them that way. It looked good and that's how I did it on the previous painting and it, it, it registered really well for some reason. Uh, sometimes the things you do don't make sense uh, when you look at scientifically on the light and its direction and everything uh, but they do make sense compositionally so you still do them anyway. And now I'm signing this. I'm not going to show you the whole signing process uh, but in any case we can wrap it up and remove the tape. Now you can finally see the painting. Uh, let's look at it a bit from up close. And again, I'm sorry that the video format is a little different. Uh, I wanted to preserve my ability to concentrate uh, and have the camera kind of set to the side and not interrupt me and also be able to use this uh, for uh, other places, not just on YouTube. So here we go, removing that tape and discovering the beautiful frame. You know, a lot of people love this moment, so I want to try and always show it. Now I'm getting a bit messy here with the tape. Sorry about that. Check it out. Check this out. Beautiful frame. And then for the last one, and I'm gonna have to take a break and remove the tape from my hand. <laughs> but. Here we go, and we're done. So now let me show it to you everything zoomed out. Uh, and then also we're gonna zoom in a bit so you can see the details. This is the painting I'm gonna exhibit in Fabriano this year in May in Italy. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that uh, and happy with how it came out. Again, it's a larger version of a smaller painting that I did a while back, like uh, um, half this size. Uh, so in any case, this is a 38 on 56 centimeters. I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, so now let's wrap it up face to face. So this is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed seeing the entire process. Let me know your thoughts in a comment down below. I was really excited to share with you a tutorial that's actually 
for a larger scale painting because I do a lot of small ones, a lot of quick ones. This one's a little more robust, a little more detailed. Let me know if this format works for you. Obviously, I can show each and every single thing and I had a bit of a blooper with the phone as well while filming. Uh, but I hope that gets the point across. If you have any questions, let me know in a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope 2020 has started uh, the right way. And I will see you again in the next vid real soon.